Hey everyone, welcome back to Navajo Tea Time. I'm Kelsey and I'm with Adrian and we have our guest, uh, Bea. So I'm really excited that we have Bea on with us. Um, I have known her for a couple of years now. Kelsey and I have worked with her professionally uh, through this organization called the Native American Business Incubator Network, which is now Team Labs. And um, I'm really excited to have you on, Bea. Thank you for joining us. I wanted to uh, let you have the opportunity to kind of share about yourself real quickly, like this for the audience. Um, so Bea is an entrepreneur. She's a small business owner of Shelton and Echo Retreat. They have a wonderful setup in the Page, Arizona area. It's a glamping Airbnb twin hotel. I love that. Um, so a lot of these questions are geared towards like your entrepreneurship and your uh, position as a business owner. And then there are a few other questions included that kind of like touch it. Um, like, you know, who you are as an individual and things like that. Um, I'm going to start with our first prompt, which is, let's test your entrepreneurial intuition. What is the first question you think I'm going to ask you? Um, you're going to ask me to explain a little bit about myself and the business. <laughs> so, is that correct? <laughs> I wanted to kind of, I know that's always the first question. So, Bea, tell us a little bit about yourself, eh? hey. No, so... <laughs> Actually, the first question is, uh, try to describe yourself in three words only. Oh my God. Um, I don't often think about myself, so um, this is probably a little bit of a challenge. I would say hardworking. Does that count as one word? So uh, hardworking. Um, and then, uh, let's see, thorough. And then also, um, hmm, gosh, you know, I don't, I can't even think of a third word for myself, guys. Um, I don't know, a mom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That that's that's about it. Like like I said, I don't really often think about myself. If I were to describe one of my children or my husband to you, even my parents or even my dogs i would be able to do that but i mean for myself like i just don't often think about myself yeah i think that's the experience for a lot of moms i feel like we're mothers first before anything else so i think it's cool that you said that um like right now i'm with my family i have my three kids with me so for our audience i apologize if you can hear them but you know i'm a mom first as well so everything else comes after that <laughs> did you want to ask adrian to describe herself in three questions or three words can you describe yourself in three words? I describe myself as finesse, a song, and um, the third descriptive word I would think would be warrior, A. Eh? <laughs> How about you, that, that opens a lot of stuff. Like, what <laughs> your definition of a warrior? Absolutely. Well, the easiest definition is I'm a Chuba City warrior. I graduated from Chuba City High School. I work at Dinah College. Our, our, we are also warriors. But I think also if you think about Nazani, Nabahi, you know, that in that sense, you know, someone who is taking the reins of leadership within their own personal life, um, seeking to be a good role model and do good work for their community, you know, fight for the community, protect their community, um, someone who believes in the vision for their people as a whole. I think in that sense and with that definition, I do, I would say that the uh, word warrior is applicable. Um, how other people view it, <laughs> I don't know. But um, I'm not out starting fights or anything either. So <laughs> I do advocate. How about you, Kelsey? How, what three words would you use to describe yourself? Capricorn, INTJ, and sleepy. I take a lot of personality tests and it always aligns with like the Capricorn core values of a lot of things. So it's like, yeah. And then one time I did like my whole astrological chart, like the birth chart. And there was like seven of the little spots were Capricorn. And I'm like, okay, so I'm like super Capricorn. <laughs> I, I did the same thing. I'm a uh, Virgo and I all, all of the little dots fell into Virgo. I think the only other thing was like, uh, an Aries or something like that was Aries something I don't know but um, but yeah I'm completely Virgo than an Aries so 
we'll go to the second question. Um, where did you get your entrepreneurial spirit and are your parents entrepreneurs? Um, I think, um, I think in the words of Lady Gaga, I was made this way. <laughs> no, nobody else in my, in, in my family, um, are entrepreneurs. Um, my mom is, is a creative, but she, um, she never, she doesn't have that entrepreneurial spirit, which is different than the creative spirit, I believe. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just me. I've, oh, and I've always been this way. I've always been like, I, I guess, ambitious as well. Like we can do this better this way. And, you know, it's, it's better this way or, you know, cause, uh, like we're Virgo. Um, I'm always right. <laughs> that, that's a very Virgo thing. Um, but yeah, uh, it's um i'm not i'm not obnoxiously so though um but yeah i mean i just i, I guess it's sort of a, a a mix of being ambitious and um always wanting a little bit better and knowing that i can make it a little bit better um i say that with the utmost humility though because i know that you know around me is you know I, I i live on the reservation um and uh you know many people that just due to the social ills that were that are around us don't believe that as you know um within themselves so i i don't i don't you know tout that and i am I, like i said I, I say that with the ultimate humility i I just don't want um, to come off as like arrogant, you know, <laughs> because I'm not most definitely. That's a good point because you know, we talked about how there are barriers to success that exist within tribal communities and on tribal lands and for business and enterprise to thrive, there are a lot of challenges. So I think you're absolutely correct about that. And it really does take um, a, a strong driving force, right, to, to propel someone to pursue a, a business of their own and so that goes into our next question um what is your key driving force to becoming a business owner well i mean if i had to really think about it i mean i have problems with authority i guess <laughs> um so uh that's probably you know the bottom of it but also you know i mean i i just like like i said you know i'm I feel like I can do better, not for anybody else, but for myself, right? So, you know, and besides, um, my husband as well is, has that sort of same, we have, we, we align in that same attitude that we're not really great working for other people because ultimately, even if we were working for other people, we would then be like, listen, I'm going to go and do this on my own because I feel like I can. Um, so that, but that's, you know, that's what it is. And it's, it's innate. It's not, you know, I didn't cultivate this and nobody ever told me that, you know, um, that, that I was supposed to think that way or anything like that. It was just, you know, it's innate. Um, I, I don't know where I, it comes from exactly. Yeah, I get that. I'm like, it was one problem I had, like working in like the regular workforce, is like having to obey other people's agendas and timelines, and it's like it's really hard. So I'm like, oh, I got to do my own thing. <laughs> so where did the idea of your business derive from? So when I um came home from um off of my travels and all of that um paul and i my husband um we were together and we you know we tried to start something similar to shashana um on the uh on the arizona mexican border because we both lived in bisbee and uh, it just just as fate would have it it just wouldn't it wasn't working um so then it came time to shock my parents that i was with a white guy <laughs> so we we came up here to visit my parents and um and then you know um paul was like you know he had never been north of uh, flagstaff at that time 
And so he was like, what, where is everything here? You know, like, where is all of the economic development? You know, why isn't it on the side of the road? Why is nobody doing anything? Um, and I, um, I, I mean, it never even occurred to me, you know, he, he was looking at this place with whole new eyes that like, I never even thought about, you know, um, any of the things that he, he brought forward just because this is my home. So, um, so yeah, but you know, one of the things that we did have in common was that we both wanted to have sort of like a, a B and B or, you know, like something like that. <clears throat> so my plan was that, you know, I was going to live off the reservation until I was probably like, you know, 50, 60 years old and then come back and then just host people in, you know, one of the uh, build a Hogan or, you know, uh, there's, we have a couple of old Hogans here on the property and just maybe fix those up and then, um, and, you know, and host people. So that was my retirement plan after I got tired of being out in, um, in the world. And so, um, so then life happened. Um, and then, you know, we, I, as, so we decided to move back here and try to start something together, Paul and I, and then we were just sort of messing around and, you know, just trying this and that. And then I found out that I was pregnant. Um, and then, so of course we had to be like, okay, just life got real and we have to do something that actually works and to make it work. So, you know, our children were, were a big factor in, in trying to make that work <clears throat> as well as the fact that, you know, when we did, um, come here and, and we were present in the community, we saw that there was no um, true interaction with the Navajo. So there was Antelope Canyon and all the tours, but you know, that's such a passing thing. And, you know, not that Shushtana ever like goes into depth with, you know, culture or anything like that, you know, um, but like, there's no real engagement with the land. When somebody comes here, um, you know, they, they get to experience that. And to me and to others who are open to that, um, it's, it's, it's this huge thing that they didn't know that they were missing. So we have a connection with this land, um, you know, all, all three of us. We don't even realize that because we've always had that. We've always lived here and we've always been taught that, you know, uh, Mother Earth and, um, you know, and, and where, where we stand within that. We are the children of, of all of these elements and deities. And so we are connected that way. And so, you know, the outside world doesn't get that, you know, they don't, they don't receive that sort of information. So they're just a part of, you know, they don't feel like they're a part of this, you know, mother nature, they're under it, above it, below it, beside it, you know, but they're not a part of it. And so, you know, when you cut, when they come here, it's, um, it's, they feel that, I mean, that, that feeling is almost palpable to them because to me, um, there's so many, um, so many people around here who are, and so it just, it's just almost, you know, it's almost tangible, that feeling. And so that's what people feel when they come here and they don't realize that that's missing. So that's part of, you know, it, it's not something that I have curated or anything like that, but it's just part of what Shashtana is. And, um, and I, I can't take credit for that but it's just like but that's an engagement with the land and um Musan that we know and we love and that is a part of our lives that you know other people get to to have because that's just not for us it's for everybody you know and that people forget that and people forget that they're supposed to be connected so anyway that was like so that's what we know and that's just like putting into words like um, how we engage with, you know, Nihima, Nihima, and, and then, you know, when other people come in, there was no true, like, engagement with that. People come and see, um, the national parks and all that, and just like, oh, it's so pretty, it's beautiful, blah, 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 but they don't, there's no real, like, 
engagement. So that's what we kind of meant when, you know, there's a quality, uh, that quality interaction with the Navajo, with, um, with the, uh, um, with the land itself. So we had, we were already thinking about the, um, the B and B sort of stuff, but it just sort of morphed into glamping. So that's, um, you know, and, and that's how it all started. There are something about your website that I really like is that it shows the history of not just yourself and the business, but also the history of the land. And if you don't mind, I, I'd like to read a little blurb that's on your website for the audience. Sure. Okay. So read the history of the land that you have to each time. Petroglyphs, arrowheads, and scars of pottery can be found while hiking. Remnants of days long past can still be seen in the artifacts of local cities, as well as in the old wagon trails littered with antique glass that glitter in the sun. I mean, that imagery is amazing. Um, it goes on to read During the long walk period of Navajo history, Dale's ancestors hid in the Chanan community army to escape being forcibly removed and marched hundreds of miles to Fort Sumner in New Mexico. The family history can be traced to these grazing lands for 15 generations. Togons that their ancestors built are still standing, and their knowledge of the history of the land is still on their tongues for anyone interested in listening and learning. And, you know, I think that's a welcome to those who want to stay there that beyond just a night stay, you know, in Arizona, it's also, a welcome to, to to feel those questions, right? For you to share that story and for them to be a part of that history. And and on the website, which I welcome anyone to go visit, is at www.shestrinet.com. Um, there's there are beautiful photos of the ranch of the Glamp, which is basically um, maybe you could describe glamping for us real quick. But if you go on the website, you can see all the various accommodations that are available, and there's so so beautiful so unique it's very immersive and so um i wanted to kind of put that little tidbit in there check out and learn more about you know what shashkina is and what it what it offers um to those passing through um and yeah so i don't know if you want to comment on that but the next question is basically what you were um, just talking about about how how did you decide on the location of your business? And I think you, you touched up on that, but. Okay, so when we when we initially started, um, there was a, a couple of sites that we were looking at and we were actually building at a site um, at another location. Uh, I mean, if you listen closely to mother nature, she'll tell you exactly what she wants you to do. <laughs> um, and, and that particular site um, was not where she wanted us to build um, a, during a, a huge windstorm. We had built, uh, we were building the beginnings of infrastructure, stairs and platforms for our tents. Um, and during a big windstorm, um, the, uh, the, plat the, the wind got underneath the platforms and smashed it up against the rocks and just decimated the whole thing. So um, it, it, that was a clear sign to us that this is probably not a great idea here. Um, and so, you know, we just sort of sat back and thought about it for a minute. And what made sense to us at the time was um, to put the glamp where it is now, which is, I think, I don't know, like maybe a hundred yards, 200 yards away from our home and it's worked out um you know for a myriad of reasons um but you know it's close to where we are and um it wasn't so change is very difficult for people even if it doesn't really affect them um so i i was i i mean a lot of people said a lot of awful things to me and my husband or about me and my husband because we were bringing in um, a uh, a business here, um, and so 
it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't a great thing, um, you know, and so because of that, we were also going through all of that when we decided to move it here. And, but, and so it just all worked out um, to put it where, where it's at, you know, eventually we'll, we'd like to expand, um, but it's, um, you know, it, it, again, we have to, you know, listen to where that will naturally happen because we're, uh, you can't really force stuff, you know, especially here. And especially if you're, you know, wanting to be, you know, part of the land, um, and also, um, you know, uh, saying that you, you listen to, you know, um, the universe or the creator or whatever, you know, you can't really just force anything, you know? Did you kind of want to get into what glamping is for some people who don't really know? Oh, yes. Okay. So glamping, um, is a, um, glamping, the word itself is, um, short for glamorous camping. So um, that just means that um, all you have to do is show up. <laughs> you don't have to bring anything extra. Um, everything has been provided for you, usually in a stylish way, a very well done way, um, because obviously it has to be glamorous. Um, and so we, we definitely try to do that. Um, there's, you know, a lot of, uh, I mean, we, we think, we think quite deeply about, you know, things that people might need and um, even things that they don't that would just be um, useful to their time here. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's just short for glamorous camping. How did you come up with your name, uh, the Shashtanae Echo Retreat, Eco Retreat? We went back and forth a lot of, so I, um, a, a very dear uh, uncle of mine who has now passed away, though he's quite famous, James Peschlakai, um, we actually, um, we consulted with him and um, he, he felt very strongly about the fact that we should, um, we should name it something in the Diné language, as well as uh, he wanted us to, you know, go with like the Georgia side of stuff, right? Like he wanted, you know, us to say something like Nijona something or, you know, Hojo something. And we tried, we, we came up with so many, um, just so many names, but none of them felt right. And then, um, and then, you know, my husband was like, you know, and, and when we came here, of course, I told him, all the stories and um you know the background to my family but um so my clan is shashtanet sinajani and there is like this story that is uh just in a nutshell the story goes you know um that long long time ago you know when the the animal people were leaving the world to us and they were you know, when they had finished leaving the world, we, they were no longer going to speak to us like they, we, we're speaking to each other. And so during that time, um, there was, uh, you know, a group of people that were beside this mountain and on top of this mountain, they could see um, a light and they went up there and they checked and nothing was there. Finally, on the fourth day, they, in the, they went, they got to a clearing and there sat a bear man and a bear woman and in between them was a baby and that baby they told those people you're going to take this baby girl and you're going to raise her and her clan will be Tanajani and so it's not we're not Shashtana we're just Tanajani Shashtana Tanajani because that's where we come from we come from the bear people and um and so it was an homage to that because you know and and i have to give that credit though to paul because he's the one who sort of you know came up with that and he's like you know there's you guys have such this strong tie to the land and and all of the people that come before you and we you know there's 
all of our ancestors whose names that we we tell you know in these stories and um and he's you know he said that you you are this land they were this land they they still are here and you know this is what we'll name our business and so that's um that's where that comes from so i um, mean and, and that when he said that and you know um and and we said uh, i mean it just felt right Shashtana echo retreat you know so that that felt right and that's we, we went forward from there it's interesting you say that because my great grandma um i don't know if you know her grace yellow mexican um because i'm kind of also related to james peshlakai also and she would always tell us too that well she's gave us a different story of like two children were found a little boy and a little girl and like like she said like they were little but they were kind of like bear children and that they said they were from Sisnajine and so the people but they misspoke like the kids misspoke and so they thought that they said that their clan was Sitnajini and so that they're the bear people and somehow that's different than the other Sitnajini clan in a different way. Yeah. Well, um, James is my uncle on my dad's side. So he was not Sitnajini. I think he was um, uh, Kimchi. But um, but yeah, I, I, I'm, you know, there are like so many different stories on Navajo, even, you know, for every different clan and not one is correct or, you know, or, uh, or incorrect, I should say. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it is, it is nice though, to hear all those different stories because I, I mean, I like to think about like, where did, where did it all come from? You know, I love talking with you. You have these wonderful stories and experiences to share that are so important to me as an individual also, you know, as a, as a friend, as a colleague, because, you know, seeking out other women leaders who are, you know, keeping these stories and, and telling them and sharing them, but also um, creating their own stories, you know, to pass on to the next generation, which I think is so important. Um, and, you know, like when you were talking about the clan, both of you, like my clan, there's like several versions of that clan as well, depending on the region and the experience, because my cousin, it covers a whole uh, population of people that are directly linked and influenced by um, those who come down from Mexico. So like Mexican culture, the tribes down there, but also the Spanish. So those interactions, all those people are kind of lumped into one plan. And so there's various versions of the origin story, I guess. And so I know I know mine, where my family came from, but it's different from people who I've met like in New Mexico who have different interactions with people from down, down south. So yeah, I think it's really interesting. And you're right, they're not all incorrect. In many ways, we put them all together and they tell a really good comprehensive history you know, of how we came to be here in, you know, Dinah Um, Okay, so let's transition to some rapid fire questions. <laughs> so the next 10 questions will be rapid fire, okay? Okay. So let's like knock them out. Okay, so I'll start. All right, um, considering the first competition in today's business world, how would you highlight your company's competitive advantages? Meaning, you know, what makes it stand out in the crowd? Um, I think, I mean, without again sounding arrogant i think that's pretty obvious <laughs> um it's we we're pretty much the only thing in the game right now as far as like um high-end um true uh native american um experiences um so i mean that's and and we put a lot of work into making that uh, you know, to making us that. So, um, you know, that's, that's how I think we're, we're like, a, you know, in, in top, in the top competition. So I, we can't obviously go against huge corporations because we don't have that type of money, but, you know, as far as like boutique hotels and stuff like that, then, you know, yeah, we, we're, I mean, pound for pound. What book has inspired you the most? What book? Oh my goodness. 
Oh, I, you know, I haven't even been able to read a full book in like almost a, a decade. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, I just, I'm just too busy for that. Um, but, uh, you know, throughout, you know, all of my youth, I, um, I, I, you know, all these, uh, modern literature, um, you know, in, in general, um, but I think when I, um, like, I'm just going to go to the, to the, uh, sorry, I'm not keeping this rapid fire. <laughs> Um, when I go to, you know, um, the, uh, the beginning of it, I think it's more like articles and things like that. I have, you know, these long articles and I read everything from like stuff off of MSNBC all the way to, you know, like the Federalist, like every, all sorts of stuff and in between. So, um, I'm not, you know, I'm not of like, you know, one opinion or the other, like it's constantly changing and evolving. And I have a, you know, a, a pretty complicated view of, of, of the world, but I don't, I don't really have any sort any one book. I have a couple of authors that I like, I mean, I love Isabel Allende. I mean, she's amazing. So yeah, but that's, she's, she's probably the best to me anyway. Gee, I, I I just started House of the Spirits. I love Isabel A. And Lucy. She's one of my favorite authors. Um, me and Michael listened to Viola recently on audio. Uh, yeah. Uh, audio, uh, Audible. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, next question. Okay, so the next rapid fire question is what routines do you follow each day? Um, oh my gosh. I um so I'm like in a period of growth. Um I'm letting go of a lot of habits that don't serve me or anything like that. And so I'm actually um, you know, revising a lot of my um my habits. It used to be just straight work. Like I would get up and I would work in for like the business, you know, we'd sit down and do emails or, you know, I would get, you know, breakfast ready for the entire camp. And then just like from there, it was just, you know, work, 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 work. But um, that was no less, that just doesn't serve me anymore. I became incredibly um, burnt out, but, um, but I, I, that's still in, in the process. There is a certain routine that I'm in that is in my head that I'm working towards um but as of right now like it's just about putting my mental wellness first so in whatever way that takes shape then that's what I'm doing first so what are your main principles you follow to build successful customer relations I am huge on integrity um and uh keeping like keeping my word so if i say i'm gonna do something um especially to uh for a customer um i i will do it i will move heaven and earth to make that happen um i i'm huge 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 on integrity um and you know my word is my bond I don't believe that uh, is quite um, the case these days, but you know, I, I really try to make that happen for myself and for my business. It's so commendable. I love that. And when it comes to customer service on Navajo, I really feel like so many, so many more businesses would thrive if more people would take the time to stand by their word, have integrity, and put the customer um, first and foremost, right? So that they have a good experience and they come back. What are your shortcuts? To, uh, to successfully handling frustration and stress. Oof! Oh my God! <laughs> I don't know if I have any <laughs> any good advice for that. But um, I work outside. Um, I um, I um, spend a great deal outside. Um, and sometimes, you know, just looking around you, um, you know, we happen to live in an amazing place here on Earth, and looking out at the scenery um is i mean is incredibly humbling not to mention the fact that i have animals i have sheep i have horses i have dogs 
So um, they don't care if you're having a great day or a bad day. Like you, they, what you they want from you is consistency. And so whether whether you feel like being that way or not, it doesn't even matter to them. Um, you've got to be there. And so that keeps me humble um, in a in in a good way. Um, so I mean it it and it, I'm lucky that I love to do that. So there you know i if i'm working with my animals working around them then that's automatically like my stress goes away that's cool i just play um video games uh, when i get too stressed <laughs> so what popular entrepreneurial advice do you agree or disagree with and why you know i don't i don't often pay attention to a lot of media so i don't know if like what people say um necessarily but my advice is always to be consistent um one of the things that i think lacks here on navajo is the consistency um of anybody even if a roadside stand like um you know if you're if you have a business you should be consistent in that business right like and that includes everything the quality um your customer service as well as the hours of operation everything has to be consistent um, because if it's not, then who's gonna, who, who exactly are you, um, you know, who's your customer base and, you know, all of that. I mean, it, it just really like people, you have to come down to the basics before you, you know, get all fancy with anything else. And it's always gonna come back down to that. That reminds me, I need to switch like to these colleges of operations for Saturday and Sunday only. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only available from 6 to 8 p.m. But like, what? <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> um, okay, next question. If you could talk to one person from history, who would it be and why? No, I think I think I would pick a Diné leader. Um, you know, the obviously the most popular one is, um, you know, Manuelito, but maybe um, I would, you know, pick like chi dodge or something you know because i mean i i would want to know what his vision in navajo like i want to i would like to have this conversation in navajo because navajo has a whole like you can express something way deeper than in english what what his vision was for for the navajo nation and you know if it, if what we're doing now even aligns with any of that um and and how he feels about like you know the people the navajo people themselves i think you kind of touched on this a little bit more but like how would you rank the key five skills needed to be a successful entrepreneur so i would say consistency um is definitely up there integrity um your word is your bond um and let's see um you have to have that drive i mean you have to have that hunger it it's you know not it, like all of these things that come in together as as an entrepreneur i mean it can't overtake your life obviously you need to keep yourself um humble and all of that um you know it it's a cons also consideration for other people i guess you know that would be you know how you could keep that ambition in check um but um but you know it's i, I mean like i don't there's no like formula i don't have like this you know this little checklist of of things um that um that i do or that I'm, I'm like, I've got to be this way or people got to be this way. It, 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 I don't even think that way that, I mean, um, I just try my best every single day. And obviously, you know, like, I think everybody feels this way that, um, you know, you feel like you can probably do better than you did yesterday. And so um, that is how I try to, you know, lead at least my business life. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, it, that's a tall order. Um, but you know, we, we both Paul and I, 
um, you know, we, this is the, the business is most of our, a lot of our life. So we try really, really hard to, um, to, to be all of these things with that consistent and, uh, be, be grateful as well, because sometimes you get, you get wrapped up in all of the drama of it and you just forget to be grateful for even the, like the fact that you're, you're here and you're successful, um, because you have your own drama going on in your head or just, you know, whatever, you know, so that's always to be grateful as well, you know. I like that you have a unique perspective on this because instead of just saying you have to check these boxes and they're going to be successful or these are the things you need before you start, it leaves a little room for um, to include your personal place, you know, or your, your, your position in life currently, you know, um, I think it's a little forgiving in a sense too, but um with that, do you have a, so I, the next question is basically, how do you define success? And I'm just assuming that's going to be a unique <laughs> view on what success is also, you know, and yeah, how would you define it for yourself? Um, yeah, I mean, that there's like several different things, I guess, to go all together. But, um, you know, uh, when, when somebody asks about success you one is automatically thinking like about the monetary part of it right which i guess you know that contributes quite a lot i mean if you don't have to really worry about um you know how you're going to pay for the things that you have then that could be defined as success um but then you know all of the fulfillment that you get from your what you're doing to make this money um, is also part of that success. Um, and personally, I I am empowered and um, to be this person. Like I I don't think I could have been sitting here 20 years ago. Um, because I wasn't ready for that. All of the things that happened um, prepared me for who I am today. Um, and and one of the things that I can like because I use prayer quite a lot. And one of the things that I always say is, you know, to the Creator, to the holy people, is please make me worthy of this success. And sometimes that may be an error because, I mean, I get humbled a lot. <laughs> I get put in my place um, by different things. My animals, the, the holy people, like the way somebody speaks to me, um, you know, I, I, get, I get that quite a bit. But, you know, I'm the one who prays for that, though. Um, so I can't really be mad or I can't really be bitter about that. But um, when all of this stuff comes, I mean, it's, I, I, I just continue to be grateful. So, I mean, the success that anybody has, it, it's completely up to them. My version of success is not Kelsey's, it's not yours, Adrian. It's, you know, or, or somebody who's, you know, living behind the hill, it's not the same. If you feel empowered, if you have, you know, a good view of yourself um, to feel like, you know, yeah, I, I made it. I'm good. You know, I don't have to prove anything to anybody. It's all internal. Um, I mean, I could, you know, just stop all of this, you know, media and all of that and just have my small business and have my sheep. And I'm, I would still be highly successful to myself and that's the one thing that should matter it doesn't matter about you know how people view you it it's um that that doesn't even give you anything you know i mean because then now you have to be like oh my gosh i have to you know you start worrying about the way that you look to other people you know when it's, you should just be concerned about how you feel inside that's really cool to hear you say that um just a type of a success 
of like it being personal and how you feel about yourself because I think like other entrepreneurs like oh it's the amount of money I make or like the amount of sales I get and so it's nice to see a different type of success that way um, I know you kind of talked about how you're still working on this but like I guess what's your personal manner of balancing work and life or like what's your dream of what that looks like mm, my I can my dream is that um <laughs> that I have the energy to wake up at 4.30 every morning and, you know, go and do my exercising and then come back and then, you know, take care of my animals and then, you know, then take care of the business and my children. Um, but my reality is, is far from that. Like, um, you know, oftentimes I'm so tired that I stay in bed until the very last minute and then, <laughs> and then rush around to do everything. <laughs> um, but um, but that's, you know, the somewhere between all of that is is good. And I've, you know, I think this also just comes with age, you know, I'm in my 40s now. Um, you know, I like I said, if you were talking to me even 10 years ago, I probably would not have been so humble, I, I wouldn't have, you know, I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have this sort of, you know, Zen um, to me. Um, but it's, yeah, I mean, if I can, if, if I can make somewhere a balance between the dream and what I actually, like my reality, somewhere between that, it would be great. But, you know, like I said, we, we strive to do better than, than yesterday. Awesome. Well, you know what? Um, I think that this interview has been really good as far as like pitching a bunch of different questions to you and you've answered them so well, so eloquently. I really appreciate your honesty. I really appreciate, you know, um, your trust <laughs> in us to, you know, be a part of this telling of your story about who you are, what you do, what your business is, how it came to be. And I kind of want to transition out of the the questions that the uh, the, the, the questions that were that we have on the document and kind of move into a more organic conversation and then transition out. Um, because, um, you know, there, there, are, I feel like sometimes when you're in an interview, it's kind of just like, oh, that's cool. All right. Next question. <laughs> yeah. I want to have a more organic back and forth with you. Um, so, you know, Bea, you were so generous in sending us a PR package and we're able to, you know, like review the items, use them, show them and you know, I want to continue doing that as far as like, I want to get a few more items and um, I really want bedding for myself. <laughs> I gave, I gave Kelsey the bedding set. And I'm just like, you can take it, you know, but I'm like, I want to get one too, you know, and I wish you could just like um, share with us a little bit more about that collaboration with Macy's um, hotel collection with our audience, because we got a lot of really good feedback. A lot of people like the items they are interested in learning more. How did that happen? You know? Can you share that with us? Um, so I that is a product of just us um, doing what we do well. We didn't go out to find that. It actually came to us. Um, and so uh, one of Macy's, um, one of the, the Macy's executives, um, they, they were researching their next collaboration. And so they had done one previously and ours is the second collaboration that they've done. Um, and so they were looking specifically for, um, women owned POC owned businesses to collaborate with. Um, and so when they came upon, you know, our website, um, it, so it, I think, I, if I remember correctly, the story goes that um, this, the, the lady who found us, her friend actually stayed here and then posted it on Instagram or whatever. And so she saw it and was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then, you know, started uh, looking, looking us up. And so um, that's, that's how, um, how they found us. And they were really respectful and they, um, they like Macy's, the Macy's group just 
you know, wanted to know. So this, do you want to do this with us? Um, you know, we don't, we're not forcing you or anything like that. So, um, so obviously, I mean, we're like, yeah, I mean, because when we first, we, when we got the initial, um, email, we were like, is this a scam? You know, I mean, this is like way too good to be true. <laughs> um, but you know, the, the, we sent, um, it, we, it took us like maybe a week or so to get back to this, these people because we were mulling it over and thinking like, what the, maybe this might be a scam. I don't know. Um, and then, so finally we're like, okay, well, we'll just, you know, email them back and see what the deal is. So then that's how, how, how it initially started. But they, when they, when they asked to, um, to collaborate with us, it was to like the, on, uh, on a, it was going to be like a lot more items. However, um, you know, just due to like, um, trademarking and things like that, uh, we, that number had to, you know, uh, be reduced a little bit, but, um, you know, I think the things that they were done very well. So Macy's themselves actually had a, a standard of quality that they wanted to um, adhere to. There are several items, um, there are a couple of items actually, that didn't make the cut because the quality just wasn't there on these items, which is sad um, because, you know, there was some different throws and things like that um, that were a part of all of that. So when when the collaboration actually started um you know they presented all of these ideas you know this is you know the designs that we have and this is what we have for this and so we had a whole bunch of um a whole bunch of design meetings and um you know some of these patterns and things like that were just i mean they were not it <laughs> So then, you know, we would say, this is not what we were wanting, you know, and we got final say on a lot of these things. And um, some of these items, you know, we, we actually tweaked the designs on them to make them what they are um, today, because, um, you know, they just, they didn't represent um, the Southwest or even, you know, Shashana. So as much as I would have liked to bring something to the table, um, you know, like a, a design wise, um, Macy's is such a huge company that they have this entire team that does all of that. And they're incredible as well. I mean, truly talented individuals who, you know, just listen to a lot of the things that I said. Um, and the way I describe Shashana and, and without even coming here physically, we're able to, you know, capture that, that for us, which was amazing. And, and, um, to me, uh, I, it was just, it, 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 it was my first time ever having to collaborate with that level of professionalism. And it was great. I mean, they did just this fantastic job. So yeah, that's that's how that that whole all went. Well, you know, I wanted to just thank you and Paul personally for we're all on the call together and just thank you guys for it. He Where's just that, came Paul? in. <laughs> I know, right? He just came in. Hey. <laughs> yes. Yeah, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Bea. You know, I wanted to just say thank you guys so much for including us. And you know, we're, our channel's growing, but it's still relatively small compared to those of other like legitimate native influencers. <laughs> and, you know, I thought it was very generous and kind to include us and send us that PR package because it was so much more than we expected. And we're so thankful and grateful. And, you know, the quality of that products are, are great. I mean, high quality, durable, wonderful products that even they, they get better and softer over time, which I've noticed, <laughs> you know, I love it. Awesome. Thank and, you, Adrian. Thank you both. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, of course. And, you know, I, I, I know that you and Paul have high standards and you guys have always had an eye and a knack for quality. And I think that's really appreciated by your customers. And I think that's why they keep coming back. You know, so I just want to put it out there, you know, this is like an honest, um 
my honest opinion, but also you know, my honest review too of, of the products that you guys have put out in the capture club. You know, congratulations. It's it's a really big accomplishment. It really is. It's a big accomplishment and what you guys are doing is amazing. And I, I really do wish you guys the best in all of your future endeavors because I do have a sense that this is just the first of many to come. There, there's a lot of stuff yeah. in the pipeline. Just you wait. <laughs> Yeah, that's really awesome. I was wondering, um, did Macy's give you guys like sets to put in your own um, little glamping spots? They they didn't. Um, oh. So that was that. So we would have to have like something commercial. This was, you know, for home use and all of that. Um, and they gave us the sets for like the PR and we were actually supposed to keep one full set for ourselves. Um, which we didn't do. We were very generous with people and <laughs> gave it all away. Um, and but you know that that's that's okay. You know um, we. I'm just glad that you know others truly truly liked it. I'm over the moon about that. That is my thanks. And and I'm I'm just glad that the quality was of of people are raving about. So. And that's that make that's enough to make me happy. Yeah, we got like a lot of comments. It was like, oh, good, a nice review of like what to get someone for a wedding gift or something like a house. Because we've had a couple of comments like, oh, I have a wedding coming up, and I was wondering what to get them, and now I think I'll get the towel set. So <laughs> it's really nice yeah. to have those different options. Yes, that's not just like Pendleton. Right. Yeah. <laughs> You know how when people have those, um, like they have the summer ceremonies or like, like you know how during some of the bigger ceremonies, the family will hand out those um, those baskets or usually like laundry baskets full of materials. Now the bougie yeah. natives have something to give out. <laughs> right. <laughs> and right here's some stuff. Stuff. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so, oh so, yeah, you know who you are and you know where to go. <laughs> I was gonna say I really love that little kimono. I wear it around the house all the time because we try not to use too much um, our heater because it's like a propane gas heater. Yeah. And so we try not to turn it on all the time. So I'll just like walking around the house all day in the kimono. <laughs> that that was my favorite piece. Um, but and I wanted to actually keep um for myself, but you know, I decided to give that to a best friend of mine. Um, and I mean. Uh, she she deserves it. She's been there for me when nobody else was. So you know, I mean, if that was the the smallest even thank you, then um, then that was uh, that. I mean, that it's hers. You know. Okay, so we've taken up an hour of your time. I think we can probably wind this down. I know you're a very busy woman. You have a lot to do. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yep, I, I but, do, you know. Yeah, are there any last things you want to say to the audience or anything you want to share before we end the, end the call? Um, n not really. I mean, I, I just, um, I just remain thankful and extremely grateful for, you know, all of the success and, um, you know, I know you know, 80% of it is, you know, our own hard work and the sacrifice that we put forward to it. Um, but if I can do it, so can anyone. And, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I didn't, you know, I don't have a university degree. I, you know, I didn't even finish college. Um, you know, I was a party girl for a really long time. <laughs> And um, because and, and that's <laughs> right. Um, and and, you know, that that's my past. Um, but, you know, that doesn't mean that, you know, because it, everybody, you know, thought less of you because, you know, you were a party girl or you didn't finish school somehow that you don't deserve that success. You do no matter where you come from. But you know, a lot of that is just hard work. You're going to work harder than you've ever thought you were going to work in your entire life. But there's pride in that and there's dignity in that. And, you know, once you get through that and once you're there, then you'll know. And, you know, and I think, you know, instead of 
handing people something, the dignity of work for them to work for it is something to, you know, something to, to strive forward because we're always saying, oh, it's just ego, you know, as Navajos. And that's true. That, you know, oh, it's just ego. Ah, you see, you know, that's, that's the one thing that goes through my head all the time when I feel like I can't do it anymore. You got to do it no matter what. So nobody else is going to do it but you. And, and I am here because of that. Very well yeah. said. Oh, yeah. Thank you for that. I think we all need to hear that from time, time and time again, you know, and there are a lot of viewers that we have that are not on the Navajo Nation. You know, there's people who've moved off, they're from different parts of the country. And I think hearing you say that, it speaks to the soul. You know, they say our, like the Nepazal speaks to the soul of who we are. And we can feel it when it's spoken to us. So, Akeha, thank you for that. And shout out to the party girls. <laughs> <laughs> party girls. I wouldn't know. I was a gamer. So, <laughs> I was stuck in my room playing games all night. <laughs> constantly playing red dead redemption i mean that, that's his stress relief <laughs> anyways thank you so much you can probably you can find um Shushna on instagram and facebook for sure are you on any other social medias like tiktok or we're, twitter we're, we're on twitter yeah we have yet to establish tiktok i don't i don't even know how that works and i i watch the videos but i don't know how it works i want to see paul on tiktok <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> Yes. yes. <laughs> it should just be called like in law and he'll just be like the white guy on the reservation <laughs> showing all the Navajo stuff. A montage of him chopping wood and yes. lighting a fire and taking out the yeah. ash. Yeah. I, plan to, I plan to run for office one day. I don't <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. All right. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you guys so much. All right. Thank you. <laughs> all right. All right. Bye. Right, take care. I'll go now. <laughs> she just smashed it into his face. Yeah. <laughs> Not a very Navajo friendly. It's like a weird label you're putting on yourself. They protect us. They guide us. You know. And my father, he worked in law enforcement, so he was. You witnessed police pulling over cars. If you got to slap a senator, you slap a senator. Incorporating language and cultural aspects into. Who's your celebrity crush? Pass. It's at a point where you're just like, what am I doing? <laughs>